My name is David Emery, and I was born on November 29th, 1964 in Pasadena, California. My schooling from second grade went well for the first two or three years. I would say in about the fifth grade, I started getting bullied by kids that were larger than me. The bullying got so bad that I begged my mother to pull me out of the public school and find another school for me to go to. So she finds a Christian school, like a Southern Baptist Pentecostal type school. And I remember her saying, your grandfather, if he knew what I was doing, would roll in his grave. My mother, I knew she was Jewish, but I didn't know that that made me Jewish. I didn't know what made a Jew a Jew. I graduated from high school. I really only had about one semester to two semesters of college. My brother and I wanted to go into business and we wanted to start our own business. My parents helped us finance our first gasoline station. And Randy and I, we were very, very successful. The one gas station we had was the number one gasoline service station in the United States. We had three service bays and we were doing over $125,000 worth of business every month. I got married when I was 20 years old. I always wanted to be married. I met a girl. She had a Jewish father and a non-Jewish mother. Here I am. I'm an Emory. I'm Jewish. She's a Weinstein and she's not Jewish. We had one child together and we're really, really close. Then that marriage failed. I get married again. She looks Jewish, but she's not Jewish. We have a child together. That marriage, it fails. I'm wondering what's going on. Why do I have success in so many areas of my life, but I can't find the right person? So in about the year 2000, my brother Randy and I were on an airplane, and I said to my brother Randy, I said, Randy, I said, I've been at this for 10 years. I'm 35 years old. I think I want to do something different now. He says, well, what do you want to do? I says, I think I want to own a campground. He said, okay, if you want to sell, let's sell. Within six months, we had sold our gas stations and I was looking for a new profession. I find a broker. The broker says, I've got one that just came open in Colorado Springs. I get in my motor home and I go on a camping trip to Colorado and I find the one that I purchased. Soon after I buy the campground, a, a Jewish looking couple walks into my office and she has a Star of David around her neck and he's got a beard. And I asked him if they were Jewish. And he says, no, we're Hebrews. He asked me, what are you? I said, well, my mother's Jewish. He says, we're having a Passover Seder. Would you like to come to the Seder? I said, sure, I've never been to a Seder. So I met this Passover Seder with this Jewish couple and they're drawing distinctions and a correlation between Jesus and the Last Supper and the Exodus from Egypt and Passover. It wasn't a Jewish Seder. It was a mixture of Christianity and Judaism, but it got things moving for me. I'm now buying books online, Jewish books. I'm learning Olive Base. It was September of 2004 and my grandmother had a heart attack. And I got on my motorcycle from Colorado and rode it to California. I figured before I go visit my grandmother, I'm just gonna drive into the parking lot of one of my gasoline stations that I sold. And I'm gonna visit with the owner of the gas station who happened to be a friend of mine. The bank that was on the right-hand side is now a Chabad center. I didn't know that the bank had gone under. I didn't know that it had become a synagogue. And I walk in and I'm looking for somebody because the door's open. In the kitchen, I find the rabbi. I said, I've never been into a synagogue. I don't know anything about Judaism. I've been kind of learning a little bit on my own. And I just thought I'd stop in and say hello. I don't know why I'm here. And he says, I'd, I'd like to put tefillin on you. Have you ever put tefillin on? I said, no, I've never put tefillin on. And he says, I'd like to put tefillin on. He says, are you right or left-handed? I says, I'm left-handed. So he helps me out. I said the Shema for the first time with tefillin on. It was a very moving experience. Two months later, after I come home from California, my grandmother's passed. I had some very, very touching moments with her before she left. And I get a phone call and it's a rabbi. 
at my campground. And he's, I'd like to come see you. It's a cold November night, it's 15 degrees. We're sitting on the front porch of my campground. So the rabbi tells me that how he found me was because the rabbi in Mission Viejo called him up because they went to yeshiva together. And I'm thinking this is such a weird thing that they could know each other. We got to know each other so well that he would invite me over for Shabbos meals. And so I would show up and I would go on a Friday night. I started wearing a yarmulke nonstop. I kept kosher and many, many other things. Now that I'm becoming more Jewishly observant, I know it's time for me to find a like-minded Jewish woman. So I go to the internet, go to a website called Froomster, registered on the site. A week goes by and I get an email from a Jewish woman by the name of Debbie. The email's articulately written. It turns out that Debbie is from Denver, and Denver is only an hour to an hour and a half away. Debbie and I have a lot in common. I realize that she's a former California native, and so am I. I'm from Mission Viejo, Debbie's from Rancho Palos Verdes. Debbie and I saw each other for about a year and a half. After Debbie and I got engaged, we flew to California, and on that trip, I was privileged to meet Rabbi Yitzi, Rachi, and all the kids, and spent a Shabbos in Rancho Palos Verdes. On uh, November 22nd of 2007, Yud Beis Kislev, Debbie and I got married at the campground. It was 22 degrees, and there was a foot of snow on the ground. We were privileged to have Rabbi Yitzi come to our wedding and read the Rebbe's blessing under the chuppah. Debbie and I have been married for about 11 and a half years now, and we come to Rancho Palos Verdes probably six times a year. We enjoy visiting, but not just enjoy visiting Debbie's mother and my mother, who often visits when we're here, but we really, really enjoy visiting this community. The Palos Verdes community is absolutely wonderful. The guys that come to this shul are just absolutely amazing. I feel like, finally, I have success in every area and aspect of my life. That now that I've got Yiddishkeit, now that I've got Chabad, Rabbi Yitzi, and everybody else I've met in the process, that things are much, much better. My name is Rabbi Jason Weiner. I serve as the Senior Rabbi and Director of the Spiritual Care Department at Cedar sinai Medical Center, as well as the Rabbi of Knesset Israel Synagogue on Robertson Boulevard. My parents moved to California right after I was born. I was like two months old. Judaism wasn't a big part of our life, though I definitely knew I was Jewish and I was proud to be Jewish. Eventually, when I was 14 years old, we moved to Palos Verdes. We joined the synagogue there, but again, we were never really very involved. My main interests were, you know, music and sports and, you know, exploring around the peninsula. So after I graduated Peninsula High School, my mom was going to New York back to a family actually for a bat mitzvah. So I went with her, I'd never been to New York before. We had a day in Manhattan, my mom was meeting a friend and she let me go free in Manhattan, so I went to Times Square and there were some people uh, preaching. They were wearing, they had big mug and Davids on their outfits. They were the Hebrews and they were arguing that, you know, they're the true Jews. I was just listening and then all of a sudden the guy who was preaching, like saw me listening, he points at me and says, hey you, are you Jewish? So uh, I was like shocked and I said, um, yeah, I'm Jewish. He says, no, you're Jewish. You wish you were Jewish. Even if you were Jewish, you could only be like a little Jewish, like five-ish, blue-ish, Jewish. You're not the true Jew. We're the true Jews. And you're a fake Jew, and I'll prove it to you. And he starts reading verses from the Torah. He was like very aggressive, and after a little while, I just kind of like walked away. I think I was even like crying. When we came back to PV after that trip, I remember I went to the Barnes and Nobles at Delamo or the Borders and PV. I was like looking at every Jewish book they had in the Judaica section. And I was just trying to like find the answer and I was going online. You know, internet was brand new then. I went on AOL. I started researching like Palos Verdes and Jewish. And then somehow I saw that there was a Chabad in Palos Verdes. And then I saw, you know, you could like see, you know, if someone was online or a contact, how to contact them. So I instant messaged um, Rabbi Yitzi. And I just said, like, are you a rabbi? And he just wrote back, you know, yes. And I was like, I have lots of questions. And I started typing out my questions. And I remember he said, you know, I'm not that good with texting with this uh, instant messaging. How about we talk by phone? So I said, okay, whatever is easier. So next thing I know, I'm talking to Rabbi Yitzi on the phone and telling him my questions. And he was so nice. And he says, well, why don't you come for Shabbos? 
And I went there and everyone was so friendly and nice. Rabbi Yitzi and Rachi were welcoming me and the food was good and the davening was so interesting and inspiring. And I was learning so much and there was so much happening. By now I'm already basically forgetting about my questions because there was so much more to Judaism and to Torah than I'd ever imagined before. So it was the summer of 1996 that I went up to Cal State Monterey Bay to begin college. And there was nothing on campus for Jewish students. I mean, there was very few Jews, but there were Jews, also a lot of professors. And I did feel something was lacking. I was trying my best um, to have some kind of Jewish life. In fact, I started a Jewish student union on campus, and I started making Shabbos. Um, unfortunately, it was nothing like Rachi's Shabbos meals, because I did the cooking. But we had all kinds of experiences at our Shabbos meals. Sometimes they thought it was weird that I was like, you know, wanting to make Kiddush and light candles. So they would be like, okay, you know, if you do your thing, we're going to do our thing. So they would become like these ideological debates. And some of the kids, there was like this group of anarchists that like at one Shabbos meal, they were like, fine, well, you can light your candles and make Kiddush and we're going to burn an American flag at the meal. So I was trying to make like some kind of Jewish life on campus. And in a way, people started seeing me as the rabbi of the campus. But the problem was, I still didn't know enough. I mean, I wasn't really a rabbi. I wasn't fully observant even then. I was trying my best, but I realized I needed more. I needed a deeper experience. I needed to learn more. And they have a program, a junior year abroad. You could go anywhere. And they had a program in Jerusalem. And so I applied and I got in. So I spent the whole year of 1998 to 1999 in Israel. And I really became very observant then. You know, I really had changed a lot in that year. I grew a lot. But my family was nervous, especially my mom and my sister, who thought you know, I wasn't gonna be able to touch them and hug them and thought I wouldn't respect them or integrate with them. And they were sad. It was like they lost a son or lost a brother and they were very worried. Luckily, Rabbi Yitzi and Rachi also had spoken to my mom and my sister and they felt comfortable with them. They knew that they were good people and sincere people and so they were comfortable talking to them. So Rabbi Yitzi sent me an email and he, and he prepared me for coming back. And he said, you know, I know that you're very observant and that you've grown a lot this year, but you know, honoring your parents is very important and your family is very crucial that, they, that you show respect to them and that you integrate with them. And right when you get off the plane, give them a big hug and tell them you love them and show them that you are still part of the family. And whatever you can do to make sure that they feel that you haven't abandoned them. And even if that means, you know what, you don't need to wear a black hat all the time. You don't need to grow a long beard. Um, it's okay, it's okay. You can love God and love your family in a sincere way. So I graduated college in Monterey in the year 2000. And I was going to yeshiva after that, but I had a few months before I started yeshiva. So I was at home kind of preparing myself going to a lot of the classes at Chabad. And I really still had this dream of being a rabbi because I was kind of the rabbi in college, but I still didn't know what to do and I hadn't really had real experience yet. And I remember one Shabbos early in the morning, um, Rabbi Yitzi woke me up at about five in the morning and kind of threw the keys at me and said, we're heading to the hospital. You're the rabbi this Shabbos. Open the shul and take charge. And then he left and I was like, wow. Like, first of all, I can't believe he trusts me. And what am I gonna do? What am I gonna say? But I was like, okay. So I went and opened the shul and everyone was very excited to hear that they were at the hospital. And I gave the sermon and led the Torah reading and kind of officiated the services. And now when I look back, my first Shabbos, the first one ever was that Shabbos when uh, Rabbi Yitzhi and Rachi rushed to the hospital to have their twins, Sarala and Mendel, and it was like a very happy Shabbos for everyone, and it was like a life-changing Shabbos for me as well. Then I went off to Yeshiva, to Or Sameach in Muncie, where I was for about two years. That's where I was introduced to my beautiful wife, Lauren, who was also from Los Angeles. We were so delighted that Rabbi Yitzhi could be part of the wedding, to say a bracha under our chuppah, and to celebrate with us. At Cedar sinai my job is to be the senior rabbi and the director of the spiritual care department. So all rabbinic issues, all issues with Jewish patients and spiritual care. As I've been working with Jews here at Cedar sinai the incredible impact that Chabad has had on countless people, being there for people, supporting people through their most difficult times, and being connected to Rabbi Yitzi and Rachi and Chabad of Palos Verdes has given me you know, this framework that I have, I think, a strong connection to the Chabad world, which has been so um, delightful for me because it's such a cohesive and supportive community. From Palos Verdes to Cedar sinai the encounter with Chabad has completely changed dramatically uh, the support and the love and the uh, embrace of Jews and Judaism in our community.
My name is Sherry Efron. I live in Palos Verdes with my husband. We've been living here for in Palos Verdes for over 45 years. I was born in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. My father was a musician, he was a concert violinist, and he had the opportunity to come to Los Angeles and play in the symphony orchestra in Los Angeles. So my parents took my brother and me and we made our home in the Los Angeles area. Judaism was always a very important part of my life. Um, I remember my grandfather, my mother's father, used to teach, prepare uh, bar mitzvah boys. And I would come in there and say, Zeta, can I sit under the table and listen? So I would go and I'd listen to everything and, and I would repeat what he said, the whole new stuff, all the Torah portions, I knew everything. Those influences from my grandparents was extremely important and uh, how to keep kosher and how to observe holidays, Jewish holidays. And my grandmother was wonderful at teaching me all the wonderful recipes that I still use today. I met Gary in 1969. We've been married for almost 49 years. We moved to Torrance about 1971 and we stayed there for a couple of years and then we moved into Palos Verdes in 73, end of 73. I have three sons. My oldest one is Nathan. My second one is Joshua and my third one is Jeremy. I learned about the special program of giving challah to seniors at the home from Marachi. We were just casually talking about it and I said that this is something I would really be interested to do. When I come and visit them, they're so happy to see a Jewish, found, a Jewish person that's interested in bringing them a challah and spending some time with them. It means, I think it means a lot to them. I, it certainly means a lot to me because I learned from them I used to visit Miriam and Harvey together in the room. She would tell me, you know, stories, and Harvey was such a loving man. He was just a sweetheart, and he adored Miriam. I was saddened when I heard that he passed away, because I really missed him. But Miriam, she continued with her observance of Shabbat, as she always did, and that was important to her, and observance of, of the holidays, doing this one good deed, visiting these people it does make me feel really special in a way that you can't compare it with anything else because uh, there's so many people that need the attention uh, of, of just a human, a Jewish human soul to come over and, and let them know, you know, this is so important.